Good morning, Malcolm Nance. Hot. Sans Good pants or not. Morning. You know what's funny about it? When you put that music on and I dance in these restricting chairs, I look like the Caddyshack gopher. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I think we should get that to trend on Twitter. Malcolm Nance, hot pants or no? <laughs> sans pants, pants or no? I right. have, hot. I have actually done that. Yeah. Uh, oh, Malcolm Nance, TV. hot sans pants or not? There you go. What? At Malcolm... one of the TV studios in Washington, D in Philadelphia, they were having a shortest short contest for contributors, <laughs> and I came in in those like you know navy swim trunks that are the original model of Daisy Dukes. Oh yeah. <laughs> He and a suit. I like it. I like it. Oh. I, I went to the beach down in Coronado. I know exactly which ones you're talking about. Yeah, I'm, I'm, God dang it. You're <laughs> one of those guys that hangs out on the seawall. <laughs> yeah. right? We go running back and forth for PT. And you're yeah. just like, you know, this is just like a, you know, porn for people who like to see men running on beaches. Every week is fleet week for Travis Bone. It's uh, <laughs> all right. Last name says it all. Speaking, <laughs> uh, speaking of meatpacking, um, now, Malcolm, I so a lot of people have remarked on this. So now he uses the Defense Protection Act to order people to perhaps their sickness or death in these meatpacking plants. It, Trump finally uses the Defense Production Act, right, not to get ventilators or PPE for our first line responders, but to order people back because now it's an emergency that we might run out of meat, right? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm certain that when the next Attorney General, Glenn Kirshner. Uh, starts carrying out the investigations of this, we're going to find out that this was specifically to benefit one of his donors in exchange for something. Uh, yeah. You know, to suddenly come out of nowhere, all of these meatpacking plants have massive infections going through them. And these states that, that they're in, the governors are also saying that if you don't volunteer to come back to work, you can't get unemployment benefits. You essentially will be let go and it's almost blackmail for those people who are coming into these factories. Thank but there's you. nothing. Look, it has to be that some donor came to him specifically yeah. about meatpacking. Yeah. I mean, well, he just did the quid pro quo with, oh, you know, uh, no money for sanctuary cities until you, you know, pay right. us back for that and, and turn everybody over to ICE. I mean, it, it, it's... I would just cut off transfer of funds from these major states. California yeah. would have suddenly cut off funds virtually the u.s economy would go into a freak fall new yeah. york state as well yeah the two biggest producers what's the what's california the sixth largest economy in the world fifth fifth who's counting fifth? Mm -hmm. all right you yeah. know i'm just saying you know these these ridiculous threats which are being done for the consumption of his his psychophants his cultists are, it's just shameful i, I mean we'll, we're it will be a multi-volume set of all of the stupidity that he has said when history comes to pass judgment yeah. on him. Um, yeah, Chris Hayes said it best. He said, tyranny is the government telling you you can't go to a hair salon because there's a plague. Freedom, on the other hand, is the government telling you you have to go back to work at your plague-stricken pork processing plant alongside workers who might be sick. Um, Absolutely. And and then if you don't go, you lose your job and you get no unemployment. Yeah. No, I mean, that that's the evil that's behind these back-to-work orders or liberate or whatever. Um, Malcolm, you will be shocked to know that uh, there are trolls and bots flooding social media with anti-quarantine disinformation. A bot tracking platform found that bots and trolls have been stoking sentiments online that have fueled protests using hashtags like Reopen America and Stop the Madness. The editor of the fact-checking website Truth or Fiction said reporters need to do a better job of reporting on the protests in the context of disinformation. Do you have any thoughts on that, Malcolm? <laughs> Let me just yeah, grab funny. some books that I have here in the studio. <laughs> Help me. It's not like I haven't written three books on the matter. Look, this is, and here's some, I have to tell you, here's where some of the Trump counter narrative has had success. His, I mean, he was just out the other day saying everything is Russia, 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 and the false Mueller report. All of that stuff, including the Senate intelligence report, which came out, which validated everything we've ever said about Donald Trump and his contacts with Russia, with the exception of the one area they didn't investigate, which was, was he working for Russia, right? Working for Vladimir Putin. We know he works in the interest of Russia, but by attacking that constant narrative, we have very lazy journalists. I will tell you right now, the media is really, uh, there are many people who just will only 
do dictation. They yeah. won't do yeah. investigation. We know these memes and hashtags have been pushed dramatically. And look, just uh, an hour ago, you get Elon Musk. Elon Musk coming out and, and hashtagging free America right. or liberate America. What? And we're seeing the all, we are seeing the new robber barons era. We are seeing raw, pure, unbridled capitalism stoke these animosities and push these false narratives to get people back to jobs, to earn them money uh, so that they can continue being billionaires. Yep. And it, it's it's wrong on every level. Well, and they're I, willing to have pay for it and have mercenaries do it. Yeah, these. let me finish reading the Business Insider. Bots and trolls are spreading conspiracy theories uh, about yes. Democrats wanting to hurt the economy to make Trump look bad. Democrats trying to take away people's civil liberties. Democrats trying to prevent people from voting. The accounts are also using false, false data to underplay the threat of coronavirus. Um, one of the uh, authors says the amount of inauthentic activity he's seeing surrounding the COVID-19 outbreak eclipses anything he's observed before. So this is 2016 on steroids. He says it's likely foreign actors are looking to foment chaos in the United States are contributing to the spread of disinformation and the promotion of anti-quarantine protests. Uh, he believes the disinformation is being spread by trolls and bots, but also by useful idiots. Um, so here Absolutely. we go again, right? Russia's the in there. Yeah. yeah, the only thing we're missing out of this 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 narrative we have right now is Jude Law with a website, right, saying that this came from, you know, the Wuhan factories. Well, boom, we just saw Newsweek, uh, including a friend of mine, uh, write an article saying that their investigation into the to the Wuhan laboratories may have, you know, been the source of origination for this. Every major doctor in the world that has seen this virus says this is novel. It is new. It jumped from nature to humans. And this was not manufactured in a biological weapons factory or escaped from a regular factory. The thing was out there and it was going to go from nature to man at some point. So, you know, it reminds me of that that uh, that Saturday night was it Saturday. No, the Daily Show when um, Jon Stewart did a sketch uh, versus Al Qaeda versus 9-11 truthers yeah and the 9-11 truthers are winning and the Al they say well for an alternate for an alternate opinion let's go to al-qaeda and they go you know we did this, <laughs> this, is the way it is. why are you using conspiracy theories <laughs> you know that's the truth is what it is we have a global pandemic and you don't have to lie. I have people in Europe sending me American videos from QAnon people and other right wing conspiracy theorists talking about now get this Germany, which has some of the laxest restriction laws, talking about the loss of their freedom. You know, you had loss of freedom 75 years ago. This is not losing your freedom. This is necessary uh, actions to save the life of our citizens and this republic. And there are many people who have no problem letting other Americans die for the benefit of their politics. And, well, and, and based on polling, it's only 10 to 17 percent. Yeah. But speaking of 9-11, uh, I mean, the fact that we are at a 9-11 a day, as I keep saying, that we just passed Vietnam yesterday in a yeah. little over a month. And, and here you are, I always think of you as a lifelong intelligence professional. As you tweeted, the mission of the 100,000 men and women of the U.S. intelligence community is to collect and report information to keep American citizens safe and alive. 56,000 who died alone shows Donald Trump does not believe in that mission. The dead mean nothing to him. Hashtag Trump must resign. I, I mean, the fact that not every prominent person in newspaper is calling for him to resign I, I, is a mystery to me, Malcolm. I don't understand why all of your listeners, I, no matter what your tweet, no matter what your text, no matter what you put on Instagram, throw the hashtag Trump must resign on to the end of it. Yeah. Why is that not trending? You know, but, uh, you know, we have football, you know, fantasy football picks and all sorts of other things sitting at the top of Twitter, you know, and, you know, Final Fantasy Four. Who cares? This is we are now at the point where we have warned that this will touch your life. This will affect your life. People you know may die from this. You might get it and not recover, but if you haven't seen the video of how they take the sample of your nasal swab 
Yeah. Uh, with, uh, you know, to get the sample for your, your test, you do not want that test. All right. The way that it exists now, they got to go all the way through your sinus down to the back of your throat yep. yeah. to get it. And that's just the easy stuff. But you have disinformation by Donald Trump just yesterday saying essentially young people don't get it. Yes, young people get yes. it. Yes, we just had a newborn die. We just had a five-year-old in, in Detroit. We, I, I mean, it's insane. We have young, we have people, triathletes in their 30s that have died. I mean, it, it's, uh, young people are getting strokes from it. it there are people in their 30s and 40s. Um, okay, let's talk. Okay, I saved the story for you. We, we know the story. It's just the granule detail, Malcolm, just must make you insane. It's not like we don't know he's ignored intelligence before. He's ignored the intelligence on Russia. He's, you know, listened to Putin. He's, right. you know, U.S. intelligence issues warnings about the coronavirus in more than a dozen, more than a dozen classified briefings prepared for Trump in January and February months in, when, in which he continued to downplay the threat, the absolute opposite of what he was being told. The repeated warnings were conveyed in issues of the president's daily brief, which is so named because you're supposed to read it daily. He doesn't read it. For weeks, the PDB traced the virus's spread around the globe, made clear that China was suppressing information about the contagion's transmissibility and lethal toll, and raised the prospect of dire political and economic consequences. But the alarms appear to have failed to register with the president, who routinely skips reading the PDB and has at times shown little patience for even the oral summary that he takes, I don't know, whatever, a couple times a week. But... Mm. I mean, Malcolm, as always, like you say, there's another level of malfeasance in that he not only was ignoring this, he was telling the American public the exact opposite. And yes. openly, how, how are the Republicans now running on blame China and Democrats are too weak on China? He openly praised President Xi, praised China's response, praised how transparent they were. He was being told the opposite. And once again, he chose a foreign dictator over our intelligence, right? Right, and it's not just that he told the opposite. We have, There's a report from Times of Israel that the first U.S. intelligence report that came to them was in November. November, and he warned Israel. We warned Israel that there was something happening in China. There was a pan, you know, we have people, we have a national, national medical intelligence bureau whose sole function is to track pandemics. We had people in the World Health Organization in China. And their colleagues were communicating this, that, hey, there's a, you know, what we call a wildfire, right? There's something breaking out in China. Then when he got started getting these reports, when it reaches the PDB level, okay, that is the most important intelligence in the world that it is required the President of the United States must be briefed about. And the fact that we had dozens of these reports going to him, which meant that by the time January 3rd hit, it was in there every day, every day. There's an old saying in the intelligence community, all right? You can do a, you know, you can always make intelligence, but you, or you can lead a consumer to intelligence, but you can't make them think, hmm. right? In Donald Trump's particular circumstance, the man hates U.S. intelligence. He has said it himself. He will believe Russia. He will believe North Korea. He will not consume intelligence. The New York Times article said his complete distrust of spies and spy agents. Can I just say, make is culpable for this. It makes me insane that the Republicans are apparently the, you know, better on National Security Party. When we have no, George, not. George no, Bush, not. George Bush got a presidential daily briefing that warned exactly of 9-11 happening that, that he ignored. But that was 3,000 dead. As I said, we're how many 9-11s now? And you and Glenn Kirshner are right. There needs to be a Trump Crimes Commission. These a are commission. crimes against humanity. These are he ignored this too. Who knows what our final count is going to be, right? Oh well, we know. I can tell you right now because you know I watch a lot of these extremist forums. One of the first things that I do in the day is uh, we coordinate going back and forth on some extremist forums. But you know the places I like to sit are these gun enthusiast forums. And what you do is you see these guys going, you see, we told you it was a hoax. 60,000, that's nothing. We lose 70,000 to, you know, to, to flu every year. Not yeah, in a month. In, in, <laughs> not in 60 days. Right. You don't lose the entirety of every person that died of the flu in 60 days. We are going to be breaking 200,000 on this one by the end of the well, year. We, we've, already, Minimum. we've already had a huge undercount, according to Cuomo and every other expert, because... 
all of these people that died that we didn't know died at home, died of you know heart yeah, attack, they, pneumonia, stroke that we get, didn't know. Yeah, but you get all these rubes who are leading these you know let us out protests, carrying their guns around, them getting coronavirus, and then saying, oh, that wasn't so bad. Look, the second wave is not an actual second wave. It's the first wave of the Midwest, of the red states that are not taking this seriously. Yeah. New York, what did Governor Cuomo say the other day? He said, hey, our numbers, we are on the downswing. But if you think that that's a good thing, we lost as many people as we lost from April 1st which was a disaster yeah. on April 1st. And 90% uh, of this could have been prevented if he yes. had acted two weeks earlier. All right, I have to say goodbye to you and your creepy soldier behind you. Because I don't know what that is. That's but I my gotta... armor, baby. Okay. That's his armor. It's Come on. hot. It's hot, whatever it is. All right, we love you, Malcolm Nance. We're super long. Love you. Thanks, See you next Malcolm. week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.